Hello and welcome to the debut of Where You Live on Shaw TV. I'm Simon Hyatt. In each episode, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at a community in or around Saskatoon, talking to the people who work and live there. And we're kicking things off here at the Block Building, which has become a real symbol of the changing face of Riversdale. But before we find out about where this vibrant community is headed, let's learn a little bit about the history of Riversdale. Here's Saskatoon City Archivist Jeff O'Brien. think of you know as sort of elegant Mutana dreaming across the river and and bustling commercial Saskatoon and then brawling blue collar Riversdale with its sleeves rolled up ready to get to work. Riversdale is one of the three communities that originally joined together to become the city of Saskatoon. So in 1906 and there's Nutana, that's the old temperance colony founded in 1883, uh, Saskatoon, the downtown from 1890, and then the new kid on the block, Riversdale, which was first developed in 1903. By 1906, they were each of them a, a separate community. Riversdale was the first of the, the, the one of the three which was developed as a purely commercial settlement. The other two were laid out by the Temperance Colony Society and they have you know, great big wide streets and, and lots of areas set aside for green space. Riversdale was developed as a commercial undertaking. There was a barrier between Riversdale and the rest of Saskatoon and that was the downtown railway yards. This was a barrier between the two really as uh, as restrictive as the river itself. In uh, 1913, the city built a uh, streetcar, put in a streetcar system, and of course the streetcar came down, uh, went uh, through the underpass at 19th Street, and then went up, uh, went up 20th Street. So that was an important, an important thing for Riversdale. Riversdale has always been a very uh, ethnically diverse area in Saskatoon, partly because it's where uh, people coming to Saskatoon for the first time frequently would move there, because those narrower streets, those, uh, those smaller lots, meant smaller houses, meant that Riversdale was a little bit more inexpensive. So traditionally, Riversdale is where new immigrants come. And if you were to walk down 20th Street back in the day, you would hear all sorts of languages and lots of little businesses, lots of mom and pop uh, butcher shops and, and grocery stores and confectionaries and gas stations and hardware stores and things like that. So, so that's the kind of the character of 20th Street. The Berry Hotel was built in 1912, 1913 during the great, Saskatoon's great boom. I mean, 1912, the year that Saskatoon's population went from 12,000 to 28,000, more than doubling. And they built the Berry Hotel in the corner of B and 20th. And it was probably the nicest hotel in Saskatoon at the time. It was a, a truly grand hotel, and it advertised itself as being fireproof. So you can stay in our hotel, it's totally fire resistant. And this turned out to be only sort of the case because the Barry Hotel, the shell was fireproof quite nicely. The rest of it was the opposite of fireproof. And on December, in December of 1946, uh, it caught fire. Uh, 11 people were killed. It was the worst hotel, or the worst fire in Saskatoon's history. There were always scruffy patches. Uh, in, in that part of town, but it seemed like in the 70s and 80s, you know, really good examples, the Albany Hotel and the Berry Hotel. In the 1940s, the Albany Hotel, it was a really nice little hotel, but it had uh, uh, Wednesday nights, you'd have uh, what Schmaltz and his Rainbow Orchestra playing the Rainbow Room, you know, and the big band sound and people coming to dance and eat at, at the Albany Hotel. The Berry Hotel really was one of the nicest ho hotels in town, and suddenly they're sort of, they're sort of getting dragged down, the personality really changes. You know, in the 1980s and 90s, they called the Albany the dark hole of Riversdale. Uh, there was uh, uh, two pimps shot it out in the bar once. Um, a, um, a jukebox was fatally injured in the incident. Uh, there was a, more tragically, there was a bouncer uh, murdered, stabbed 15 times on the sidewalk in front of the Albany Hotel while a crowd of people watched. You know, so this kind of thing was happening in the Albany and the Barry. And when they tore down the Barry Hotel a few years ago, you know, old and historic though it may have been, there were no tears shed for the demise of the Barry Hotel. And it kind of, we talked about it as if it was this terrible blight on the street. And I think that almost certainly it was. And so you see a lot of change happening on 20th Street nowadays. And a lot of that change seems to date from the demolition of the Barry Hotel. So now that we've learned a little bit about the history of this area known as Riversdale, let's talk about more modern developments. Of course, as we heard from Jeff O'Brien, Riversdale was once its own town 
if it were still its town, the man to my left would be the mayor of Riversdale, Randy Shabilo from the Riversdale Business Improvement District, as well as the host of Connect on Shaw TV. Randy, thanks so much for joining us today and helping us uh, arrange this show. You're the natural choice for this because you have seen so much of this modern development. Talk a little bit about your personal history with, with Riversdale, how you first became associated with the area, and maybe a little bit about what the area was like back when you, you, you first came here. Well, I think uh, you're touching on uh, the, the title of the show, Where You Live, and this is where I lived growing up. So uh, growing up as a child in Pleasant Hill, uh, my father worked at uh, Bernie Sports Center uh, on Avenue A. Uh, my mom worked at the hospital and I would go to the movies at the Roxy Theater, pedal my bike down here. Uh, all of our friends were here, so it was, it was home. Uh, I think in terms of my professional career, I, I started with uh, the Westwood Funeral Chapel in 1981. Uh, so I've worked for 36 years on 20th Street proper. Uh, along about 1992, uh, with the Business Improvement District starting in 1990, uh, my employer at the time uh, was a member of the Riversdale Business Improvement District Board uh, and was starting to back into retirement and ease his way into uh, a different lifestyle uh, down south. Uh, they needed a replacement to sit on the board and that was uh, when I stepped up in 1992. I uh, became involved with the board. Uh, there were some streetscaping plans underway in 93, 94. Uh, and that's kind of what sparked the interest in, in terms of this old district. Uh, it had seen some uh, really, really good times and some good times. Uh, and, and along with that came some challenges in the, uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, when the, the bid was formed, it was with an eye to revitalize in the area. The downtown started in 1986 uh, after the Sastel Center, uh, then Saskatchewan Place got started there. Uh, the Broadway Business Improvement District in 86 as well, and Riversdale in 1990. Uh, so it was with an eye to uh, working on a clean and safe environment for people that worked here and, you know, the neighbors that lived here. Uh, so we encompass uh, an area up to Avenue P, but even though Riversdale stops at the tracks uh, over on Avenue K, uh, what we found was that uh, the lack of investment, we were losing our buildings, there was no, uh, there was no point in, in reinvesting if you weren't going to get your money out of the building when you sold it. So we saw a, a, a really progressive slide uh, in terms of the values and, and a lack of investment. Uh, along about 2005, we had a, uh, a project on the books with the Riversdale West Central Business Development Strategy from 2001. Uh, I was the board chair at the time and, and it would have been very easy to put that on the shelf and not do anything with that. But we saw our, our natural environment. We, we knew this was home. We knew that there was some good bones here. Uh, when we started to see the development at River Landing uh, with the old AL coal site coming down, I wanted to buy a condo there uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and now we see the, the development with the bus barns. We're, we're right in the middle of those two bookends. Uh, and that's why you're starting to see some of this uh, activity north and south, not so much east and west. Uh, so when we look at what can we do and what does the future hold, uh, we were in a, a, a 10 year kind of a trough in terms of the Roxy Theater was dark for 11 right. years. Uh, a lot of the restaurants had closed and uh, with a 42% vacancy rate, uh, there really wasn't anything here to come to except some destination type businesses. Uh, so there was a, a concerted effort to kind of pull in and uh, regroup, look at the strengths that we had. Uh, a lot of the concepts were easy uh, in terms of building a south bridge so that we could get more development into the, uh, the south uh, industrial areas. Uh, and then take some of that heavy truck traffic off of Idlewild and make it more into a major arterial than it was a highway at the time. Uh, when you start to look at things like the farmer's market and the Ideas Inc. business incubator that the bid put in uh, 2006, uh, 2007 when it really started to, to shape up, uh, and now that we have the banks being built right beside it, it was with an eye towards the farmer's market, it was done elsewhere, what can you do? And, and I think you'll hear that uh, places like the local kitchen and some of the restaurants that are starting here 
uh, there's a giant magnet in each of our stomachs that pulls us into these <laughs> restaurants, so I can attest to that. Uh, but what we're finding is that that foodie culture uh, is, is very prevalent and it's a natural fit with the farmer's market. Uh, so the restaurants and the local kitchen uh, are an example of what's starting to happen. Along with that comes the opportunity to buy uh, some affordable housing. If we have average house prices in the city of about $350,000, the average house price here at about two fifteen, dollars uh, it's very affordable in that context. So uh, we see this as a next university town now that the linkage is through to uh, the university with the, uh, the traffic bridge coming online. Uh, it, it's poised very well and, and the shift is starting to happen. Uh, so when we look to the future, uh, a lot of that street retail, the, the artisans that are coming here, we, it's, it's been uh, called the design district in the sense that we have architects, we have building uh, design, we have garden design, we have interior design, we have software design. Uh, the food designers that are coming here, you may not think of those things, uh, but it's all originating here and, and it's starting to spread. So we've done something like YX Eats, which are, is our uh, annual food festival now around the time of uh, the uh, uh, fireworks festival and, and the long weekend in September, uh, partnering with our restaurants and, and showcasing what these chefs can do. There's some magnificent talent out there in terms of what you can do with locally produced grains and foods and, and everything locally sourced. Uh, and showcasing that, bringing people down. We, we're using the Roxy Theatre now for the Silent Film Festival, uh, showcasing the Symphony, who's also uh, headquartered here in Riversdale. Bringing a lot of these people together and the collaboration that you're starting to see uh, is really part of what we're in this building right now, which uh, was a, a parking lot for over, it was vacant for over 80 years. Wow. Uh, so now the proximity to downtown, if we're looking at uh, the, the talk and buzz around uh, a downtown arena uh, that we hope will be built, built very closely uh, to us, close to the river, ideally situated. Uh, we see a lot of young families uh, with their eye to here now. Uh, the urban culture is starting to emerge and we're right on the cusp of that. It's got to be incredibly gratifying to see that development that's happened. Are, is there part of you at all that's surprised at just how successful it has been because it's really, as someone who's lived his entire life in Saskatoon, it's really remarkable the turnaround that's happened in Riversdale. I, I honestly did, never thought that I would see that we'd have a parking problem uh, and parking issues with things like the, uh, the parking permit program for residents because there are so many people now parking uh, to work here, uh, to park here and work or walk downtown. Uh, that I never thought I'd see happen for at least another 10 years, but those permits are being applied for today. Uh, the, the attraction, the, uh, the banks and the, the farmers market are driving a lot of that. And we see that with the parking revenues on the Saturday is off the charts compared to the other six days of the week. So we know that's working successfully. We're, we're seeing a lot of the pedestrian traffic, uh, you know, a little bit of buzz around the Midtown Plaza. Uh, if they expand, what will happen with a new downtown arena? What will happen with uh, the bus rapid transit on 22nd Street? All that ease of access and, and uh, ability to flow, uh, to walk close to where you work, uh, I think that you're going to start to see a lot of that start to root and start to grow. Uh, but it's taken a long time to get here. But now that it's growing, it's going to come a lot faster. Definitely a fun energy here in Riversdale. Coming up on Where You Live, we're going to be talking to a few of the people who've chosen to make their home here or their business here or both. Learn a little bit more about that. But Randy, we'll thank you for joining us and, and sharing the Riversdale story because it's a, it's a fun one to tell. So on this, our first episode of Where You Live, we're taking a deep dive into the community of Riversdale, certainly an area that has seen a lot of changes over the years and decades. A lot of those recent changes have been led by a lot of really younger people, including the gentleman who joins me now, Curtis Olson from Shift Development. Curtis, let's talk a little bit about the history of how you first came to this area, what drew you to Riversdale? Sure, yeah, in, in about 2006, I'd finished a project helping my, uh, my father and uncle uh, convert the Fairbanks warehouse, mm -hmm. which was my first taste of um, property development. And I found it was 
uh, a wonderful experience, technically challenging, creatively uh, wide open, and 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 uh, great business uh, experience. So after that, after the completion of that project, um, I pushed all my nickels into the one small pile that it formed, and realized that um, Riversdale was an area that offered a young guy like me an opportunity to. Um, carve out his, his niche. Um, what I found in, that, in the first little house that we bought and renovated was that um, as I spent more time uh, in the neighborhood and in the restaurants, you know, eating lunch while we were working on this house, uh, I discovered um, uh, a lot of opportunity and a lot of great um, aspects of Riversdale that kept my interest and has retained it there. So now we've been working in Riversdale for about 10 years and we're on our ninth project now and and we've taken on a whole number of different projects over that time frame. Let's get into a bit of that scope if you don't mind uh, with those nine projects. I know a wide variety of different things on the go in this area. Yeah, you know I think people have a tough time putting a finger on me and my company <laughs> because we've done um, you know renovations of a couple of small homes. We built a really modern and very uh, green infill home called the Shift Home in about 2009. We converted uh, the old Ukrainian, the Orthodox Ukrainian church hall into permanent artist studios. Um, we created the 220, which was the city's first co-working facility. Um, we're on our second townhouse project now um, in Riversdale and uh, I've taken on a couple of other commercial projects right on 20th Street. So I guess we have, um, I mean, the common thread is actually geography. We can, I can walk to every project that we've done within five minutes of my office. And so when every once in a while I get a call from an agent who says, hey, I've got this place out in uh, Airport Industrial that we want to show you. It needs, a, it needs a good idea thrown at it. I've said, if I can't walk to it, I'm not interested because um, we've just found that, that, that Riversdale is um, it's a neighborhood that has room for fresh ideas mm -hmm. and, and those fresh ideas can go somewhere um, which is why we have um, been there which is why we live in Riversdale yeah. and why we work in Riversdale. And you're actually raising a young family here in Riversdale. Talk about that side of things because I think a lot of people think about this area as being more of a commercial area. That's how it was originally designed but you actually not only work here, but live here. What's that like? You know, it's phenomenal. So we've been living in the uh, Element Urban Village project now, just since uh, late in 2016. Um, I suppose the claim to fame is that we have a six acre front yard and the city cuts the grass. It's called uh, Victoria Park. Sure. And so our experience has been every, every evening when, when I get home, it's always the question of, you know, if it's, uh, if, if it's nice weather, we'll go to the skate park, which I can see from our front door. Um, now that we're into winter, we're tobogganing about five times a week because there's a nice gentle little hill in Victoria Park that we're using. And, and, and for me, for, for my wife and I, uh, lifestyle is about proximity and, and what you have on your doorstep. I would rather um, be using the MVA trails as opposed to running on a treadmill in my basement, you know. And in terms of those active lifestyle offerings, um, Riversdale knocks it out of the park because, I mean, honestly, all of, the, uh, all of the new amenities that the city is building out on the riverbank, they're on the west side of the river. They're on our doorsteps. So it's been a phenomenal experience in that regard. And of course, one of the big themes of this show is the change that's happened to Riversdale over the years as it's gone through its ebbs and flows. Have you seen significant changes personally in the decade or so that, that you've been here? Absolutely. You know, my, I mean, my memory goes back to when I was about seven years old and I was in Joe's Cycle buying my first BMX or Walter's Cycle, yeah. which we now own the building that Joe's Cycle was in. So, so I, have, I have a memory quite a bit um, farther than just the 10 years that we've been here. Um, but but I, I have found that there's been um, a lot of change, I think a lot of very good change because the, you know, the community that we've anchored at the 220, um, there's a spirit of collaboration that, that, that underlies the, the spirit of that building. I mean, we anchor that building, we're there every day and we've kind of set the tone and the expectations and, and as a result, we have a huge amount of tenants that have, um, that have put their businesses in Riversdale 
understanding that it's one of the most um, uh, the, the culturally and demographically diverse areas of the city, yeah. which is stimulating. It's great because you're not living in a little box. You know, there's, there's people from all walks of life and um, there's, uh, we, what we found is that our tenants have really engaged with the neighborhood, whether it's, um, you know, putting a food box out front of the 220 or volunteering at Friendship Inn or a food bank, and not just doing the annual um, volunteering thing so they have a photo, but having brainstorming sessions with the food bank about the future of the food bank and, and as their evolving needs are. So I think, um, I think we found a really engaged group that is, um, part of um, reimagining um, re what, um, what this neighborhood is about. And I think it's brought a lot of new life um, and a lot of uh, open eyes to the neighborhood too. And the great thing is there's still so much that can be done, you know, as we sit here in the block building, which yeah. is basically a blank slate right now. I mean, the future is, is kind of unlimited for this area. You know, I, I think the future of Saskatoon is urban. And that, that's a trend that's happening all across North America. The beautiful thing about Saskatoon is you can see the trends coming. Yeah. You just have to look east or west and, and you, you, you know what's coming. And I think that the, few, the die is kind of cast for, um, for, for downtown and for Riversdale because there's so much opportunity for, for urban projects like the block, like exactly what's happened here. This is a great project um, and there's room for another, probably another 20 of these to happen in the coming decade um, in Riversdale. Well, Curtis, I'm sure you'll be involved in several of those, probably not all, because probably. you got a pretty full plate as it is, but we want to thank you so much for joining us on our first episode yeah. of Where You Live and, and sharing your thoughts about this, uh, this very interesting neighborhood. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So for this episode of Where You Live, we are filming inside the relatively brand new block building on Avenue B. One of the tenants here is The Local Kitchen, and I'm very happy to be joined by the co-owners of The Local Kitchen, Julie and Bailey. Thanks so much for joining us for Where You Live. This is such a unique concept for a business, something that I'm not really familiar with. We'll start with you, Julie. Tell us a little bit where the idea for The Local Kitchen came from. Well, uh, another owner of the kitchen is my sister, and her and I own a small food business uh, making uh, snack bars mm -hmm. um, using local ingredients. Um, and we found when we were doing product development for our bar, there was no commercial kitchen space available for us to use. Um, so there was no sort of middle ground where we weren't ready to buy our own equipment um, yet, but we weren't... Um, able to do it at home. So um, we borrowed a restaurant from a friend to do it there. Uh, however, we started dreaming of sort of an idea where these food businesses could get together, work in space that is inspected and they can sell the stuff that they're making, as well as share ideas and um, not work in such isolated pockets like they do now. So that was where the idea sort of came from, but it developed over time um, as we reviewed and re-reviewed the business model over the next year, so yeah. So through that development, it's added in things like you also offer classes. I know you work extensively with local chefs as well. Uh, talk a little bit about that side of things, the way uh, other people can come in and take advantage of this, Bailey. Um, yeah, so we basically have a platform for people to experiment with teaching the kind of cuisine that they're passionate about. So um, we have a roster right now of about 10 people. Um, it includes chefs and dietitians and nutritionists, butchers. And so that lets us offer a variety of different classes and kind of gets more people in the community involved. So it kind of was at first a secondary idea, but now it's kind of become one of our main things that we focus on, so. That's great, and when you decided that you were going to launch this business, that it was a viable idea, of course you have to find a place to, to house it. You chose to come here to Riversdale uh, in the block building. How did that decision come about? Yeah, so we had been in contact with a realtor and she suggested this building to us and we thought that it was very beautiful and exciting and whatever, but we kind of took a step back to think about whether it fit our needs or not. And it actually like really 
reflected the collaborative feel that we're going for um, with the kitchen use. And the block is kind of a shared facility and we've got some shared courtyards and whatever. And Riversdale in general is kind of got that same collaborative vibe with the 220 and the farmer's market ideas inc that kind of thing and it's it's getting more hype as like kind of having a food scene so if we can be in the middle of that it's good for the people that are using our kitchen so it's like a cozy neighborhood too yeah. everybody is yeah. very supportive of each other and helps each other out and stuff so yeah it's a great yeah. place to start a small business we like being here. <laughs> That's great to hear. It's definitely a fun energy here in, in Riversdale. Talk about, uh, with the, I, I know you're it's still relatively new, opened up about a month or so ago. Uh, what has this, this first month been like as you get used to, to being in this space and, and getting the word out there and, and letting people know that, uh, that you're here? Yeah, it's been good. Our cooking classes have been uh, selling out fairly consistently. Um, yeah, we've only done like maybe six or seven so far, but sure. for the next month they are almost completely sold out and uh, we're getting a lot of interest from the public, so we're really lucky that way. Yeah, we're starting to get a few more products going in our retail space as well, so we love having people pop in and say, what is this place? And then we <laughs> tell them all about it, so yeah. yeah. Well, and you mentioned the fact that this area really is kind of becoming food central. There's so many great little restaurants around here. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible, the food culture that's growing up in Riversdale. Yeah, it really is. And it's nice that we have the close proximity to the farmer's For market sure. and River Landing. So if we have people like food trucks or caterers or that kind of thing that are using our facility, it's easy for them to get their supplies in if they're using the farmer's market and then also like pretty quick access for them to get out and sell their stuff so mm -hmm. it's very central yeah that's great if people need some more information about the local kitchen what's the best way to get it probably go to our website yeah it's www.thelocalkitchenyxe.com and we have a page on our rentals one for our classes and then another one that kind of highlights some of our retail stuff and then we're pretty active on social media. Julie is our social media guru, so. Guru. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what are our tags or whatever for yeah. social media? So our Instagram handle is the local kitchen underscore YXE, and then we also have a Facebook page, so yeah. That's great. Well, thank you both so much for taking some time out, because I know you're very us. busy with a new business. Uh, it was very nice to chat with you, and wish you good luck with the local kitchen. Awesome. Thanks thank very much. You. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the first episode of Where You Live. We hope you've enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about Riversdale, and we hope you join us next time as we continue to explore Saskatoon.